Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Joining us back today is Michael Pento. He is the president and founder of Pento Portfolio Strategies. Welcome back, Michael. Thanks for having me back on, Ivan. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure having you back on Wall Street Silver. So, Michael, Jim Cramer says the economy is heading for a soft landing. <laughs> what do you make of this? They figure the only outcome is a soft landing for the economy, which means it's foolish to sell now since you'll only end up be buying back those same stocks at higher level. Well, I, first of all, if I had any doubts about us having a soft landing or not, now they're completely placated because <laughs> I know if I'm on the opposite side of Jim Cramer, I have to be right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Booyah! <laughs> I mean, what a, come on. I mean, like, what, what value are you adding to people? Soft landing. So where is he getting his inf information from? The, uh, Janet Yellen, the Federal Reserve, you know, Jerome Powell. Where is he getting his information from? Jim, why don't you go back and look at the lagged effects of monetary policy? You know, less than a year ago, we were at 0% Fed funds rate. By yeah. March of this year, we'll be at five, heading probably to five and a quarter before they stop, before the economy falls off a cliff. Um, there's a lot of lagged effects there. By the way, the lag effects are about 12 months. That's the average time frame. Sometimes they're a little less, sometimes they're a little longer, but that's the mm -hmm. average duration between when you start raising interest rates and so when they start actually having an effect on the overall economy. Now they've already affected asset prices, but they haven't really begun to affect home prices yet. They've affected the stock market, they've affected bond prices, but they haven't affected the economy as of yet. They haven't really affected home prices yet. They just affected greatly the demand and the volume of the real estate sales transactions. So they're down like 40% year over year. Right. That's that's a lagged effect coming onto the market. The Fed's quantitative tightening program is a lagged effect coming onto the market. Right now it's being offset by the draining of the Treasury General account. But that's going to end by June. So there's there's a there's a there's a brick wall the economy is going to run into right around that May June time frame. So, you know, soft landing, I, I mean that's that's a myth that's being perpetuated by the Jim Cramers of the world. Don't invest that mm -hmm. way. Don't do that to yourself. Right. You, you, you're, you're going to be much better off having a model. I, I created this 20-point inflation deflation economic cycle model, which I followed. Now, it did not tell me to get bullish in January, but it did tell me to get slightly less bearish. And it's things like that. By the way, that's the same model that got me out of the market in the beginning of 2022. Back, really? Actually, the end of 21. It got me to be bearish in, in December of 21. So I saved my, me and my clients from the vast majority of the, of the carnage of the, that occurred in uh, last year. So sorry to cut you off, Michael. What point are we at at that chart? You said you were at a 20 point chart uh, that you made. What point a, are we at? It's a 20 point component model. It has 20 components to it. Mm -hmm. And there's five sectors. So those models, that's a diffusion index. E each component is, uh, is scored using a diffusion index. And that output will tell me what sector of that spectrum we're in from deflation and depression all the way to hyperinflation and intractable inflation and stagflation. Those Interesting. Are the, that's the spectrum we're, that we, we follow. But we were it dancing between sectors one and two which mm -hmm. is that deflation, recession, depression, and a disinflationary environment. We're still in that, the sector two, well, we went from one to more of a two sector, but this is a, trunc a truncated rally that we've seen in January caused by um, you know the wash sale rule, uh, China reopening early. Right. I don't know if I should explain the wash sale rule, but you know, you, you, if you sold the Kathy Wood, you know, Kathy Wood stocks went down 70%. Mm -hmm. 2022. By the way, that means that she needs 233% to break even. <laughs> well, so before, you, before she takes a victory lap that she's the new NASDAQ, uh, you need a lot of you know things to happen for you to just to break even, Kathy. So just read how, how crazy is that? She said she's the new NASDAQ. Yeah, you're the new NASDAQ. Okay. You lost 70% <laughs> or so. I don't know if she lost 70%. I'm saying that the profitless tech sector lost about 70% in 2022 which mathematically means you need 233% just to break even in nominal Jeez. terms. So just pull back, you know, pull back a little bit on your, on the, uh, on the, on the celebration. 
Um, but you had the wash sale rule. People dumped there, realized there's losses. They dumped those shares, brought them back in January to get another, set themselves up for another big loss in, in the next recession. So when they mm -hmm. go out of business, because they can't afford to issue new debt uh, at these, at these interest rates. So, um, so then you had the China reopening early. You had the TGA account being drained. So there's a lot of things that are offsetting uh, the recession. Uh, the economic hurricane is still here. We had the first, uh, wall. So the eastern end of the wall hit um, uh, in two, 2022. The other end of the eye wall is coming. It's probably coming in June. So like in the gold and silver world, we are waiting for the uh, for the Fed to pause or pivot. Can the can the economy even handle more any more rate hikes at this moment? Like what happens to precious metals, Michael? Well, precious metals. I'm about almost. I'm about ten percent long the the precious metals complex. Nice. Right? And, and I, so I, that's a double from where I was in 2022. Precious metals need uh, the primary thing that drives the precious metals market is the reduction in real interest rates. Now, we still have nominal rates that are rising, but the market understands this. The gold market understands this. And I think the stock market uh, is presaging this, too. Uh, the Fed's tightening cycle is just about over. They're at 4.515. 4.52 on the effective Fed funds rate right now. Mm -hmm. So we have another 50 basis points or 75 basis points to go before the economy falls off the rails by June. That's fine. Now, the stock market is presaging that and saying, okay, this is great. The Powell's about to end his heightening cycle, tightening cycle. But they're forgetting the other side of the equation. Right. The Fed is going to tighten into a severe and acute recession. So rather than just run off and buy stocks, Jim, what stocks do you want to buy, Jim? <laughs> how about we how about we just take a step back, take a breath and say, what stocks do we want to own? Right. Well, how about some gold mining shares that haven't fully participated in the massive hysteria that took place since 2020, since the outbreak of COVID? The four and a half trillion dollar expansion of the Fed's balance sheet. How about we buy some physical gold? I had a seven, seven and a half percent allocation in my current portfolio. Uh, gold, the gold market is presaging the end of the Fed's tightening, and also the other end of that, which is, I believe, sometime in maybe late 23 and 24, mm -hmm. the Fed easing up on the nominal rate. Uh, uh, the rate hike, not only ending rate hikes, but actually a reduction in the Fed funds rate, you know, draining some of those rate hikes away, taking them away. The end of quantitative tightening. Um, but the rationale behind that is going to be an economy that is in trouble. Right. Credit markets that are faltering. It's the, you know, Wall Street now is saying that the Fed is going to, or they were saying at least a week ago before this latest non farm payroll report, came out. And I'd like to touch on that too. Yeah. But Wall Street was pricing in two rate cuts by the end of 23, but not any of the reasons why those cuts would happen. Mm -hmm. So that's that's still to come. And the reasons why those cuts are going to occur, if they occur, occur at all, is in the context of deflation and depression slash recession. And you just said there was a report you wanted to touch on. Uh, wh which report are you talking about? The non-farm payroll report that came out on Friday, the 517,000 oh, yeah. net new jobs that were were announced <laughs> by, the, by the, the Labor Department. So if you want to believe that number, you can believe that number. I don't believe that number. And the reason why I don't believe it, not because I don't want to believe it, it not because it's inconvenient for my portfolio. It's right. inconvenient uh, to ignore the facts. So there are other metrics of the labor market that we can look at to confirm or to contradict that number from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So let's look at the ADP report. The ADP report, which is actually, you know, not something you shouldn't ignore. They don't have a good track record of being verified by the Labor Department's numbers, but they still have a service. It's a payroll service company that right. said only barely over 100,000 jobs were created in January. Okay, you don't like that number. Let's go to the ISMs. The ISM manufacturing survey showed they have a component. So it's a fusion index of, as well. That showed that not only is the, the manufacturing economy barely growing, but 
the number of new employees barely grew at all. It's 50.6 on the diffusion index, which means that the manufacturing sector of the economy is barely growing as far as jobs are concerned. The bigger part of the economy is the sector. A, a bigger sector of the economy is the service sector. That diffusion index, the employment diffusion index was at 50. So the largest part of the economy showed no net new jobs were created. Wow. And the other sector of the economy, the, the manufacturing sector, showed that barely any jobs were being created. So you have the ADP and the ISM show that we're not really a, in a robust economy. And yeah. employment growth is barely growing at all. So I know there was there were massive benchmark rev revisions at the Labor Department. So maybe that's why they, you know, that maybe that's that skewed the number. Oh, by the house, the by the way, the household survey showed that only 84,000 jobs were created from the from the Bureau of Labor Statistics number. Wow. So um you, you, you just you, ha, you just can't take things at face value that oh the headline number blew away <laughs> expectations and then you get jim kramer's going it's a soft landing bye 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 <laughs> yeah yeah and then Jan even Janny ellen she came out this week and she says you don't have a recession when the u.s employment is at 53 years uh 53 year low <laughs> yeah. so it's like 3.4 percent yeah yeah well guess what guess what ivan you know how you can get a zero percent unemployment rate if everybody in the labor force just left and they stopped looking for jobs then your right. unemployment rate would be zero so they you know these these are phillips curve people that exist at the federal reserve they look at um the, the unemployment rate to determine where we're headed as far as inflation is concerned it, it's just in, inane you know every time we've had a high unemployment rate in this country, virtually every time, mm -hmm. virtually every time, we've had a very high unemployment rate. We've had inflation that was extremely high. But the Phillips curve says it's the exact opposite, that a low <laughs> unemployment rate engenders high inflation. Well, it's the, it's the, the exact opposite. So what, what's what's next, Michael? Like, let's say the Fed keeps on raising rates. Uh, let's say the next meeting is... 0.25 basis points. What breaks first? The real estate market, bond market, uh, the stock market? What are you looking for first for, for it the to break? Market, the bond market has already broken. I, I mean, we were at 0% Fed funds right now. We're going to be at five by March. So, um, you know, short-term interest rates used to be zero. Now they're at four point. You can, you, can, you can get a short, in fact, most of the biggest position in my portfolio is short duration, zero to three month duration treasury bonds. Interesting. That's a great place to hide out. You're making over like four and a half percent. <clears throat> Excuse me, four and a half percent. Yeah. That's a pretty good, you know, number with a it's a riskless uh transaction right now. It's a riskless investment. Or as close to risk as close to riskless as you can get. Mm -hmm. Um very large part of my portfolio. Um, but the bond market is already broken. The housing market is rolling over and the stock market is, is still, you know, even though we had a pretty good January, we're still down, I think the S&P is still down over 10%. NASDAQ's down closer to you know, 15, 16% um, year over year. So we still mm -hmm. had a, you know, we're still not doing very well uh, as, as, as investors. If you just follow this you know, typical 60, 40 portfolio, you're not doing very well at all. Um, the next leg to drop in the economy is around, as I said, around June. Uh, I think we hit a brick wall once that TGA account is either drained or the, the debt ceiling is raised. And right. then you're going to have a lot. You're going to have QT on steroids at that point in time. And it happens to be at that juncture, it's going to be um, 15, 16 months after the first rate hike. Right. We were at, <clears throat> we were at zero in March of, of, of 22, as I mentioned. So you're going to have the lagged effects of the 75 basis point rate hikes that occurred one after the other in the summertime. So that's when I think you're going to have reality hit the stock market and reality hit the economy. And what's uh, your, so what's your thoughts, uh, Michael, on the annualized uh, interest rates? Like the national debt is soon to exceed uh, 1 trillion per year in interest payments and uh, on that debt, how, how can Powell keep raising interest rates when you have, uh, well, he can't, he, he, he can't, <laughs> well, he can't. He, he can't. It's not only that. It's it's not only the um, the national debt that's the problem. It's the corporate debt. You know, cor mm -hmm. corporate debt to GDP is over fifty percent now. It's the highest in the nation's history, and a lot of that debt is triple B, so it's barely above junk. That that debt's going to be downgraded because don't forget, a lot of these companies have to keep rolling over their debt at higher and higher interest rates. 
it, it makes their debt service untenable. Right. So those people, those com- those companies go out of business. They lay off people. That that decreases consumption. It's a it's a you know pro cyclical, uh, a very dangerous cycle that we're entering into. Um, and all of the layoffs that were announced, you know, it's amazing to me. <clears throat> going back to the labor, the, the BLS's numbers. It, all you hear every day is that how many layoffs are occurring uh, in the tech sector. Yeah, that's insane. So, people, so how could you have all these layoffs and yet, you know, the unemployment rate fall <laughs> and you have, you know, 517,000 net new jobs added? There's a lot of contradictory data, but that's all going to wash out by June, I believe. It's just going to be a very clear that the interest rates are too high. The, the, the onerous debt burden on the pro- public and private sector is causing a recession. Stock market is in free fall but that, at that time. And, you know, if you listen to Jim Cramer, you're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> well, you've been right about it before. We've had you on many times, uh, like 21, 2021 and 2022. So you've been right about a lot of things. So we appreciate you uh, well, coming down to Wall Street Silver. I, I just want to say, you know, it's it's the model. I see. I am in business for over thirty years, thirty two years in, as, a, as a licensed professional in this business. Right. And I created this model to keep me out of trouble. I would like to just hide in my bunker with my gold and cans of uh, <laughs> you know, beans, like like half of my clients, I think, would like to do. But just like me. Right. But I had to create. I had to create a model that that allowed me to invest and protect my investors from these big drawdowns in. Um, in asset prices that are the direct result of recessions. Well, uh-huh. it, as I said, it got us, it, it saved us from the, the, the drubbing in 22. It then picked up in late December that we're going to have a, a, the eye of the hurricane was going to hit and we we're going to look calm. So it didn't get me, did not get me bullish. I'm going to be very clear. I was mm-hmm. not long the stock market. I just covered some shorts and added some longs to the portfolio, which helped us avoid getting crushed, being massively over our skis in in uh, in shorts and getting buried in January. And I think, and and still, to, still the case right now is that we are in the eye of the storm. Then the model will let me know when those when those credit spreads start to blow out again, when um, you you see financial conditions starting to tighten again. Mm-hmm. And and I'll increase my shorts and 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 liquidate some of my longs. That's really? how you have to you have to actively. In other words, what I'm saying, Ivan, is you have to actively and intelligently manage your money rather than just buy and hold the 60-40 portfolio. Because these cycles of recessions and depressions and liquidity booms and busts are going to be growing more intense over time. Wow, that's uh, you. It's well put. Well, Michael, we thank you so much for coming down to Wall Street Silver. And hopefully in the next two, three months, we can have you back on and we'll see what uh, Powell does. <laughs> well, I, I look forward to that. I'm more I'm, I'm more interested. At, Powell's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. He's going to take interest rates to five and a quarter. The Fed is going to do exactly what they always do is they're going to blow up the economy. Right. And then they're going to panic and go back to zero and and engender the next inflationary boom, which will be higher and more trenchant and more dangerous and destructive than the last one. Well, well, hopefully we'll have you back on in two, three months to talk about it. <laughs> Look forward to it. Ivan. Awesome. Care. Take care, Michael.